hope you guys have been having a good summer so far. Um, so I'm going to be doing your September love forecast today and um, changing things up a little bit with my reading style for just the love forecast because previously I was doing sort of like the grid layout um, that you might have seen in my previous readings. I don't know. You may be a new visitor. But um, for this reading, for the love forecast for September, I'm going to be doing a Celtic cross spread. And I will be incorporating my oracle cards, um, an oracle pull at the end of the reading, as well as using my new runes that I just got in and I'm very excited to be using. So let's get started. Spirit, what are the messages for Scorpio for their love forecast for September? Love forecast for September 2015. What are the messages for Scorpio Sun, Scorpio Moon, and Scorpio Rising? Spirit, what are the messages for Scorpio Sun, Scorpio Moon, and Scorpio Rising? Okay, interesting situation here. I have the Knight of Cups that fell out upright. So, some of you, Scorpio is a water sign. Some of you may be on a, a uh, love journey of sorts, or you may be, may be being pursued by someone who is a water sign. This is a very lovely card, by the way, the Nine of Cups. It speaks to someone who is very lovely and dreamy and is is in search of love or is on a journey of love someone who could also someone could also be wooing someone with their romance with romance but well, he's a romantic fellow the nerd of cups he really is okay spirit what are some messages what are the messages for scorpio for the month of September for their love forecast, their love reading. Okay, Spirit's so telling me to shuffle just five more times. for Scorpio. What are the messages for Scorpio for September for their love forecast? Love forecast. September, Scorpio, Scorpio Sun, Scorpio Moon, and Scorpio Rising. What are the messages for Scorpios for the month of September for their love forecast? And um, I will be pulling an oracle card for you along with this reading. So just give me a moment. Spirit, what are the messages for Scorpio? 
for the month of September. Scorpio for the month of September. What is their messages for their love forecast? Their love lives. What's the message for Scorpio? For their love forecast. Now, I'm also going to be pulling some runes here, doing a rune drawing. Right, what are the messages for Scorpio for September for their love forecast? go ahead and turn the cards over and then I will readjust the camera to make sure you guys can see the cards. So for September, the Celtic cross right here. I got my my tarot glasses on. Um, in the position that um, in the position that represents you um, in the present situation, we do have the Tower. So to me, the Tower speaks of um, a relationship that's. Uh, going to be going through some transformation. Um, what once was will no longer be. And the foundation of the relationship was not secure to begin with. So for some of you, there is a rebuilding that needs to happen. And it's going to have to happen on a more stable um, with a more stable foundation because as it is right now as you can see with the turbulence of the waves and the flames coming out of the tower and actually the crack starting to show the cracks are literally starting to show in the relationship and so by September in September there's going to be an event that um, transforms the both of you in your relationship and so we just have to see how these two forces work. Um, so we have the tower, which is the major arcana. What helps or hinders the tower is the nine of swords. And let's see, he's presenting with this rune, victory, Tewaz, victory. So, um, I do see and is this impressive this is? So what's helping or hindering this tower or this relationship from separating is some swift news or an event, um, possibly some sharp words where um, an air sign, it could be a male air sign in your life comes in. And he... Um, is victorious. He feels that he is one or that there is a that he's he's conquered you and now he's moving on type of thing. Um that's one interpretation. But um I do see that 
the destruction of the relationship being um, actually helped by this air sign because if you know like how air and fire work is that the, the more air there is the more fire there is and so with air with the swords being a sign of communication we're looking at some 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 sharp sharp words spoken that lead to the destruction of the relationship and um with with Tai Taiwes, let's see the name of the I'm still learning the name of the runes. Taiwes victory. I do see that this force being successful, this um, Knight of Swords character being successful in uh, the destro and destroying basically the the foundations of the relationship for better or worse. Um, so those are the two forces that we're working with here at the center of the Celtic cross. Um, now, I'm going to move to the left here. So in the past situation, with the Two of Pentacles reversed, here's the Two of Pentacles reversed. Someone is feeling off balance. There's not a sense of um, really being able to juggle. Um, finances or not being able to juggle to people or the relationship itself has become unmanageable. Um, it can also speak to uh, losing, losing, feeling like you're losing um, material property, feeling like you're losing money. You could feel like you're, um, you're just, um, you don't feel like you're gaining materially or you're gaining ground in this relationship. It could just represent that. Um, but there is a real sense of, of imbalance here. So um, that's in the past position. Now, subconsciously, you do have the Eight of Wands. And we have a lot of runes near the Eight of Wands here. So the Eight of Wands, if this is your subconscious, it's, it's something that um, you may not be aware of. Um, it's also the root, the root of the situation. So to me, it speaks of just a lot of things happening or a lot of things up in the air. There could be a lot of communications up in the air between you two. It also speaks to just a ton of stuff going on at this time. And I'm just getting this sense that it's almost just overwhelming for you to be able to carry on a relationship with all of these things going on. There's also, this also can represent the, the arrows of passion. So Scorpio, you are a uh, water sign and the Eight of Wands is speaking of fire energy. So there is a lot of passionate communication happening um, at the, so we're talking about subconscious, the root of the problem, the root of the situation. Passionate communication. Maybe you guys have been sending messages back and forth very fast. Um, let me just look at some of the runes surrounding this. Okay. We have Ophelia, Prosperity. And it's interesting that all these um, wands are kind of being projected into the air and like all the runes kind of landed almost as if they're like extensions of these wands being thrown out. So prosperity is very good. This is a great rune. It can also speak to someone walking away. Um, it can speak to kind of like, I do get an eight of cups feeling from this card. So, um, we also have this rune, Daga's home. Home, we have Rido journey. And we have uh, Jira success. So prosperity, home, journey, success. Um, these are all, I sort of see these as 
manifestations of the subconscious. I do feel like you want all of these things. You want prosperity. You seek prosperity. You, you want You want a good, you want a stable home. You want to have a home with this person. Um, maybe you want to go on a journey with this person. A romantic journey. And also, you you want to feel like they're reciprocating on all of your, on all fronts as well. And maybe there was a lot of reciprocation. I feel like there was reciprocation. I feel like you guys were like sending messages back and forth. And... Maybe you were on a journey together at one point and maybe you were even living together and there was prosperity. So I see all of these things that were happening in the past that were, um, you know, building up the relationship or factors in the relationship. And they're almost like, I sort of see these as like things that you held dear to your heart as things that you subconsciously really want and that are being affected right now in September that are going to be affected. So what crowns you is what you want to manifest. And with the Queen of Swords reversed, um, I do see that you want to let go of this person or this person uh, or this person wants to break up with you. But um, she's an air sign and we do all of the Nine of Swords here. So someone is, someone wants to break up with someone is what I'm getting. Or, but see, this is from your perspective um, because it is, um, yeah, I'm trying to do this reading from your perspective. So um, this is, the Queen of Swords typically means to me that someone wants to break up with someone. Okay. And going into the near future, going into the future, this is what is yet to happen in September. I do have the Six of Wands. So you will, um, you will be victorious. And also we have the Victory Rune here as well. So you will be victorious. You will walk away with your head up high and you will be seen as a leader. You won't be the one who, um, you may be the one actually breaking up with this person or you may be the one causing change in the relationship. And so if you are the one causing change, if you're the one who's initiating this, the swift, the swift change, um, I do see you being the victorious one. I see you winning, being the one that conquers. Um, if that's what you want, if that's what you want to manifest. Um, but with the Queen of Swords and what you want to manifest, I see you letting go, successfully letting go of a relationship in order so that you can manifest these things um, in your subconscious. You want reciprocity. You want to go on a romantic journey and you want a good steady home life and prosperity. And I see that you're, that you're going to be able to get that. It's coming into the future. Um, so how you see yourself is I have the Six of Cups. So you may be feeling a bit um, nostalgic or stuck in the past about this person. You have like a lot of bittersweet memories. They might be, they may be an ex that was coming back into your life for a second chance and you were just like, no, this isn't happening. I'm moving on. So you do, I do see you having, um, you see yourself um, in all the good, in, in the good old days, the way things were. You see yourself reminiscing a bit about the past, how they see you. They see you as done. They see you as finished. Um, they see it as over and done with. Um, that there is no hope and that it's the bottom of, 
you know, you've had rock bottom. So they don't, um, they see you potentially also as, as yeah, just being um, pretty much uh, flat on your face. Like they don't see you really coming back, being able to get up so easily after this event. Your hopes and dreams or your hopes and fears are the four of pentacles reversed. So this speaks to me of fearing of letting go. And since it's just a fear, you can let it go. You're afraid to let go of this person after what happened, but um, in the outcome position, I do have the lovers, which is a very powerful, uh, and complicated major arcana card to have for an outcome. So it speaks to me um, of you feel like you two have a like soul level um, contract with each other. You feel very physically attracted to this person. You are in the outcome position um, I see you still having to make this choice within yourself because there is such a strong soul tie with this person in your life and you, yeah, in the outcome position, I do see that you are needing to make a decision between two people and you still um, feel very much tied to a person in your life um, and are finding it very hard to let go of that person um, because that you guys have like some kind of twin flame relationship or some kind of soul contract like karmic ties with this person. You feel like maybe you had a past life with them. So there is definitely, the outcome for me is what I'm seeing is though you be maybe manifesting letting go of this person, um, the outcome is still that this person, um, you still have a choice to make and it is, a, it is one that is very, that is going to have a huge impact on your life and destiny and it's not an easy choice to make. Um, so you have to consider... the things in your subconscious as well, all of the things that all the messages you're sending out to this person. And um, remember that in the past, I mean, not to say that you can't change the past, but in the future and what you're trying to manifest um, is to bring about reciprocity that you want to go on a journey, you want to go on a journey with this with a with a lover. You want to go on a romantic journey with them. You want to have a home life with them, and you want prosperity in the end. So those are the factors I feel like that you have to weigh in your heart first, to so that if you don't feel like you're getting that out of the relationship, then absolutely this this tower situation has to happen so that you can rebuild the relationship better on more um, solid ground, so to speak. So for your Oracle card, I did get dreams, but it was reversed. Vivid dreaming, dream messages, dream teaching. So let me read you the meaning for this card. Number 23. Normally when I get the card dreams, some of you may be having some vivid dreams, maybe dreaming about someone, like astral travel, that kind of thing. 23. Okay. So this says, this card in reverse. Sleep disturbances, awakening throughout the night, unable to remember or recall or to feel out your dreams, 
a sense of something being out of your reach, sleep that is shallow and fitful, or simply proclaiming that you do not dream. This, along with denial that you dream or that dreams matter at all, could be taking place at the moment. First, change your sleeping environment and begin to soften in your determined opinions. You have dreams and messages that are wishing to speak with you, but it is up to you if you choose to remain deaf to them. So, yeah, I feel like this card is urging you to be a little more dreamy, to sort of soften your edges and to allow yourself to really explore in a very kind of soft way all the things that you want and that you dream about. Be open to um, be open to going on a romantic journey and be open to letting your dreamy romantic nature sort of take over at this time. And um, I think your emotions will speak to you through your dreams if you're able to get a good night's sleep. So maybe um, one intention you can set out to the universe is that ask for some guidance to come in through your dreams. Um, because what your dreams do is they, they speak to you of like your hidden, the hidden parts of you, the shadow self of you that is afraid to come out during the sort of your conscious, the conscious levels. Um, so you might be able to get more in tune with some subconscious things that you're feeling about this person or about relationships in general. Um, and I feel like if you're able to get some good dreaming done this month, you will be able to start to manifest these things that you want to bring into your life. If you really pay attention to what's going on at a subconscious level. Because I do feel like there is a lot of stuff going on in your subconscious right now that you want to manifest. And um, I feel like the situation that's going on right now, there's something that's not working for you. And it's causing you to be sort of unbalanced. And what you need to sort of do is like live in your, you need to live in your truth. You need to let those dreams that you have about a beautiful romantic future come through into your waking life so you can start to manifest those things. So I don't really feel like you're on the wrong path here at all. I really feel like you know what you want and you're very driven to get that. Um, you're afraid of letting this person go and you're not sure and it's because you have very strong karmic ties with this person either from a past life or because they're tw they have like a twin flame relationship with you. But don't be afraid to express the things that you are dreaming about and the things that, that you get romantic and gushy about, let those things kind of bubble up to the surface of your conscious, of your conscious life, so you can start to manifest them in your relationships. So that's my, my love forecast for you, Scorpio. Scorpio, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And um, be sure to leave me comments and feedback and all kinds of good stuff like and subscribe and let me know how everything's going. Okay, Scorpio, love you guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of August.